Labas vakaras visiems. Tiesą sakant, šį vakarą labai keista matyti žmonės Skype'u. Nu, ne šį vakarą, šį vakarą gal jau ir nebekeista. Teko atgal instaliuoti į savo kompiuterį Skype programą, nes seniai jau jį buvo pamiršta ir jos į vietą ūtėme. Na, arba kitos problemėlės, arba susitikimai akisi į akį. Atrodo, kad situacija Lietuvoje keičiasi ir pasaulyje keičiasi taip, kad mes vis dažniau kurį laiką susitiksime būtent tokiu būdu, interneto pagalba. Na ir kol koronavirusas versusis į Lietuvą žengia tokiais nedideliais žingsneliais ir daug žmonių dirba iš namų, Aš taip pat dirbu iš namų, aš esu žurnalistė, Agnė Bukartaitė ir šį vakarą manęs paprašėt, na, pristatyti, pamoderuoti pirmąjį susitikimą su šeiko šokio teatru, kuris jums siūlis šią savaitę ir matyti to, kol tęsis, na, visą tą tokią sunkį karantino situaciją, siūlis pamatyti ir spektaklių, ir įvairiausių šokio pamokų. Šiandien mes pradėsime su Šeiko šokio teatro šokėjų, Jevgenijumi Kalačiovų ir jo jogos pamoka. Bet prieš tai aš norėčiau pasikalbėti su Šeiko šokio teatro vadovė, Agnija Šeiko. Sveika, Agnija. Sveiki. Girdit mane. Taip, taip, taip. Klaipėdai gyvenam, bet susitikti negalim. Agnija, kaip sakasi, kuo gyvena šiandien teatras ir žinau, kad teko atidėti ne tik gastrolės Kinijoje, bet ir Lenkijos projektą, taip pat nevyksta spektakliai ir čia Lietuvoje. Tai ką dabar veikia šokėjai ir teatrą? Taip ir visi kiti Lietuvos ir Europos gyventojai esam namuose ir stengiamės, kiek įmanoma, būti ir izoliuotis ir laikytis visų nurodymų vyriausybės ir solidarizuoti su visais ir kažkaip palaikyti visus. Tai šiuo, kaip tik vakar, turėjom tokį strateginį susitikimą. Vieniai switch back your camera. Ir bandėm dėlioti šiuo jų savaitį savo veiksmų planą. Ir šokėjai šiuo metu namuose užsiminėja, ta prasme, užsiminėja savo, kaip pasakyti, fizinių aktyvumų, taip pat ruošiam visokias edukacinės programas, taip pat šokėjai tiesiog nustebino idėjų gausą, ką galima būtų nuveikti, kaip galima būtų labai atsakingai pasižiūrėti šitą periodą ir įvairių online galimybių, ta prasme, net kaip spektaklis galbūt nufilmuoti būnant savo namuose, Tai iš tikrųjų įdomių visokių dalykų, bet esminis dalykas, kad bandom nesustoti ir tiek kartu su savo kolegom planuojam visus kitus likusius metus, kad būtų įmanoma veikla ir kažkaip atsigauti ir bandyt nepasinerti šitą iš tikrųjų sudėtingą situaciją, bet joje kažkaip išbūt gyvai ir todėl norim labai Mūsų bendruomenė ir klaipėdėčius ir kitus Lietuvos žmonės kažkaip pabandyti padėti vieni kitiem. Vienos kultūros įsteigos ir organizacijos, čia jokie nepasmetis daugybė ir šokėjų ir teatralų ir dy poeziją kelėsi į internetą ir jūsų teatras taip pat ir šios tiesioginės transliacijos metu parodės jogą, bus ir kitų transliacijų, kuomet matysime spektaklius veikams ir suaugusiems, ar šios šis projektas turi kažkokia įkvietinga misija, galbūt jūs tiekat kažką, tai nežinau, ar tai rinktumėt kažkokias saukas, kažkam tai padėti, ar tiesiog jūs tengiatės, kad visuomenė būdama kartais ir ilgai namuose tiesiog neužsisėdėtų vietoj, galbūt yra kažkaip turiningai leisti laisvą laikį. Tai pirmiausia, ką tu dabar ir išvardi, tai tikriausiai pirmiausia ir yra mūsų pagrindinė misija, kad Mes netaptumėm kaip uždary, kaip kokie hobi, tai visiškai savo namuose, vieni kitų nematydami, tai tikriausiai vienas pagrindinių dalykų yra, kad vis tik palaikykim ryšį, matykim vieni kitus, kad kitas dalykas, žinoma, kad sėdėdami namuose, kad vaikam būtų, ką veikia, kai atrodo, vaikų spektaklius ir lygiai taip pat saugusiam, kaip ir visi kitą teatrį atveriam savo video įrašų biblioteką. 
Tai, man atrodo, šitas pirmiausia, paskui jau žiūrėsim, manau, kad ta prasme pagalbos reikės visiems, tiek finansinės, tiek emocinės, tiek visokios ir paskui žiūrėsim. Viskas priklausys nuo aplinkybių. Rytoj rodote spektaklį, vaikis pas spektaklį. Baltoj lopšinė. Baltoj lopšinė. Ar tiesa šis spektaklis yra daug kartų buvęs kinijoje, ar ne? Taip, taip ironiška. Taip, mūsų daugiausia keliavės mes septynis gal kartus turėjom ilgas gastrolės Kinijoje ir valandžio trečio turėjom skrysti visą mėnesių į Kiniją bet šitam visam pasikeitus dalykui dabar visų laukiam prie ekranų. Ir iš tikrųjų tai vienas daugiausiai rodytų spektaklį visame pasaulyje. Baltoj Lopštinė, rytoj 12 valandą, na, o porį, ketvirtadienį 19.30, spektaklis suaugusiem, koks tai bus spektaklis? Kasgi yra lisa. Imersinis. Taip, imersinis, į kuris iš tikrųjų visai neseniai buvo rodytas Klaipėdos dramos teatre, bet mes labai ir norim su juos startuoti mūsų spektaklių pristatymą, kad galėtų, ta prasme, ir nebuvę žmonės, iš tikrųjų jis yra toks vis tiek ypatingas, reikalaujantis ir įsitraukimo žiūrovų, bet šiuo atveju tikriausiai įsitraukimas per ekraną. Kaip suprantu, spektaklis nebus tik rodomas pats spektaklis, bet bus jis ir pristatomas. Tai yra herojai arba jūsų šokėjai, tą spektaklį pristatys ir tiesiog bus lengviau žiūrėti, ar ne, šio laikinio šokio spektaklį ir suprasti, kas jo nėra matęs. Taip, tai mes naudojame šitą galimybę, kad galim tai padaryti per šitos visus tinklus ir susitikti su žiūrovais, su jiems labai trumpai pristatant. Mes šitą idėją pasiskolinom iš kino pristatymo, kad tos kelios minutės iki parodymo, iš tikrųjų, man atrodo, labai svarbu. Ir paskutinis sakinė klausimas, keliausim tiesiogiai pas Žainę Kolačiovą. Paskutinis klausimas, ar šių transliacijų metų bus galima pamatyti jūsų spektaklius šiais metais nominuotus auksiniams samos kryžiams? Taip toli dar pirmiausia pradėjom rodyti tuos, kurių galbūt nėra, bet žiūrėsim tiek tęsis karantinas ir galbūt, aš manau, kad taip. Tai Volero jau yra LRT Medietekoje, kai galima pamatyti bet kada, bet aš manau, kad taip. Aš labai tikiuosi, tiksliau atpirkščiai, kad nereikės, o mes galėsim kuo greičiau susitikti gyvai. Aš irgi norėjau pasakyti, kad labai tikiuosi, kad jums neteks kurti spektaklių internetu ir galėsime vėl visi grįžti salės ir turėti tą malonumą matyti vienas kitą kisijakį. And now, I would like to say hello to Žene. Hi, Žene, how are you? How are you? Well, I am feeling worried, but that's fine and very interesting and challenging state of mind. How do you feel? I mean, you are from Russia, yeah? Maybe you call your relatives already. Maybe you know what's happening there. Are you calm enough? You can still do yoga? Um, of course, I can do yoga until the moment I die. And yes, of course, I'm talking to my parents and my relatives. And I, right. I'm a bit concerned about them, but I hope they're wise enough to control the situation. Okay, Žana. Uh, what is your yoga? It is different because yoga has uh, many different uh, classes. Uh, my practice of yoga is a uh, kind of Hatha yoga. So the one that is uh, tightly connected to physical experience. Uh, in general, uh, first kind of steps of Hatha yoga is to clean and clear the body, to make the body perfect and pre well prepared for all the spiritual practices. Like to become a kind and beautiful person, first you need to uh, have a beautiful and healthy body. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I'm not, um, like there are probably a lot of uh, types of Hatha Yoga as well, but according to one of the main sources, uh, um, I think uh, I'm translated the main idea. Yes. It's slightly connected to physical practice. Very good. Uh, how can yoga help us in this uh, serious moment? Do you think it can help? <laughs> Keep it at I, least? I think that's one of the uh, biggest benefits, at least for me, in yoga, is that you can uh, 
digest and uh, manage the stress uh, in your brain, in your mind, and then in your body, um, being connected to the breath. So um, when you're managing, like yoga is a practice where you're um, coming to the stressful situation for the body, like asanas and extreme balances or positions. And in this case, um, you need to stay calm and control your body. So this kind of practice of uh, mind control, I think, can be useful in this situation, especially, and in, in general, in any critical situation of your life. So, Jenna, thank you very much indeed. And keep calm, keep yoga practicing, keep yoga classes. I hope you you will join us next Tuesday, the same hours, yes? With pleasure. With pleasure, we will repeat this experience. So, Agne, does it mean that we can start the practice? Sure, you can start the practice, and I just told the people they can start practicing with you. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Agne. See you later. Thank you. Friends, um, we'll start our practice from very uh, small and short uh, theoretical introduction what we are going to do today. Uh, they are going to call Surya Namaskar or salutation or greeting to the sun. And then uh, very few asanas. We don't have a lot of time. So for this reason, of course, this class is uh, reduced. And in your comments at the end of the class, I will be happy to um, you to share if you would like to have a longer class or shorter, because in general, in these uh, two weeks of um, being kind of limited in our uh, movements and activities, we don't have time. We have a lot of time and we shouldn't rush. So um, main things that I would like to ask, not uh, you, but all us to uh, focus today is the connection to breath. Because as I said to Agne at the beginning, um, the oxygen and the energy that we get together with the uh, breathing um, helps to calm down and deal with the stresses and any unclear situations. And uh, this energy that will come to our brain will help us to control what we are doing, to control our moves, staying calm and peaceful. Then another thing that's supposed to be the first one is the sensitivity to our bodies. I would like um, us to have this kind of dialogue with the body during the next uh, 40 minutes, to observe information that the body gives, so to just a few what is happening in the body without judgments. And for this reason, you should stay calm and control the thoughts that are happening in your mind, but being sensitive. So maybe this kind of sensitivity is the first step to, towards understanding what is happening in the body, the first step to get into know and then control what is happening with your life, starting from the body. And the third thing that is also important is the intention. In general, why did I say about this sensitivity, besides it's uh, um, useful? In this practice, uh, there will be moments of um, silence. I will not talk to you. I hope you will not also talk to anybody, but you will be focused on your movements. And these moments, uh, I don't want um, you to be distracted with thoughts about uh, problems all around the world, uh, politics, about the neighbor that can offend you yesterday, and uh, about anything uh, bad or good that is happening anywhere else than in your body. So I'd like you to have this personal uh, contact and meeting with your body during the next 40 minutes. And therefore, the third, uh, last thing that I would like you to um, clarify or think, consider to yourself, um, is the intention of moves that we are going to make. Uh, 
In general, asana for me uh, is not a still posture. It's a, it's not a moveless dead posture, but it's an active living uh, state with the micro micro moves of the happening in the body that I will try to um, help you with instructions. But besides instructions, I would like you to create some uh, personal intention also, not to be distracted from other things. First, it can be just observation, passive observation. Then there is another concept of yoga uh, that all the stretches that we will do uh, without in a, of our body during the asanas, they are created to, they're made to create more space in our body. So the energy can uh, have space to um, have space to um, be present. Your blood in the vessels, your muscles can have more space to move. You'll create more space. So there could be great uh, intention of growing and creating more space in your body during the moves. And also the third proposition, besides I. I'm very happy if you have your own uh, intention during the practice. This is that we are going to aim for um, personal and profound experience. So the third um, concept that I would like to propose is uh, growing and reaching towards uh, new things with inhalation. So for instance, uh, having this posture of just hand I can think, or for this one, I can think about reaching towards different directions with inhalation, and then I can just accept with exhalation, accept and be happy with what I have right now. So in any asana, for instance, in your Badrasana one, I will go uh, a bit forward uh, to show you. Um, we can first reach and aim for um, the most beautiful and extreme position of your body, and then with inhalation, and then you can accept what you are having today, currently with exhalation. Um, one moment. So, um, for instance, you can uh, reach a bit with your knee and send your left hip toward the pelvis, and you can uh, turn a bit and aim with your heel toward the floor. I don't know, I'm not sure if um, my feet are visible. And you can reach even higher with your hands, with inhalation, and then you can accept. And the movement is very, very tiny, little, with exhalation. So we will start to practice with very, very small movements. Uh, and I will propose you to join this kind of practice. We are starting now. I hope your space is ventilated. I hope you didn't eat for an hour or two hours. Um, and I hope you're feeling good. Let's start our practice. First thing that we will do will be only simple movements of the head that will coordinate with the breath. So sitting in a comfortable pose with a straight back, I will ask you to inhale and turn your head to the right. And then exhaling, come back to the frontal position of your head. Then again, inhale and turn your head to the left. And then come back to the frontal position with exhalation. A few things that I will tell, tell in advance. I will ask you to prolong and elongate your breath during the practice. And I will ask you uh, to stretch your vertebras before you turn your vertebras or bend them in the right or left uh, direction. So let's do several movements, simple movements to the right and left with stretching your vertebras and inhaling, reaching and aiming with inhalation and exhaling, coming back forward. Inhaling, sending your uh, head to the left, 
The next carrying coming back. Let's do a few more times without talking. The asanas, I will ask you not just to bend and break your neck, break your neck, uh, doing mm, deflecting it or arching it, but first to reach, reach far up and then go back with the neck. As I said, as I asked you before, we'll try first to elongate our vertebras and then uh, bend or arch our body and spine. All right. So again, inhalation, uh, deflecting, exhalation. Let's start the exercise. All right, we will continue with the next exercise. One more uh, note about the previous one. So when we are going back with the neck, we can also touch and check if the muscles in the frontal part of your back will be engaged. Uh, because for instance, there is a bit more uh, work of the muscles if instead of just bending your neck back, you're also elongating and then bending. That was one small note. We will continue. Next exercise uh, of the small, co uh, small coordination of the body. Uh, you can put your arms and your shoes on the feet. And, uh, or you can put your arms on any uh, surface like a chair if you are not flexible enough or uh, it's more comfortable in this position. And we will do uh, inhalation, pushing from our glutes. In reaching with our chest up, sending our neck again, first elongation spines and then going back, and then exhalation. And then again, inhalation, exhalation. And a few more times. I will also share one more moment, one moment, and then we'll repeat once more this exercise. So, for instance, when going in the arch of your back, you are working uh, with your glutes to push your pelvis forward, and at the same time, if you are having your abdominals uh, in the tone, you can check that at this position, your back muscles can release. So instead of just arching and releasing your abdominal area, uh, you can feel or check, uh, probably it works the same way with I'm sharing my personal note uh, of the work of my body, but if in this position, instead of releasing my abdominals and uh, having it contracted and at the same time working with the muscles of glutes, then there is a chance that the back muscles are a little bit relieved. In case you are having uh, problems with your back, 
or back is the like muscles of the lower back usually works much more than other muscles then this work of abdominals and glutes will help you to relieve um, the muscles of your back let's do few more times this coordination now inhalation and arching and exhalation with uh, bending our body to the front Alright, next simple exercise before we will do a bit of breathing technique will be the movement of our legs, we will warm up our hip joints. So, um, I will ask you to inhale to bring the leg uh, closer to the torso and to put the knee to the side. And then with exhalation, you will bring the legs uh, back forward. So with inhalation, you are bringing the knee towards the chest and then putting it on the side. And with exhalation, you are bringing leg to the back. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Okay. 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 And then after this clumsy warm up with the web, web camera, camera, we'll do a bit of um, breathing exercises. And uh, yoga usually, in yoga it calls this technique called pranayama. Uh, but as soon um, I'm not uh, all this guru, we'll call it for now breathing um, exercises. And the first exercise that we'll uh, start to do with you. It's a very simple um, kind of breath where you will uh, send the air first in the area of your belly and then in the area of your rib cage, your chest, your back, and then you exhale with your rib cage and then with the belly. Um, my teacher said school called this breath as a full yoga breath. Probably this is a simple kind of breath that we use every day when we live. When we are breathing fully using our belly hooks when the diaphragm is going down, goes down and using our rib cage and back. When our muscles are not too tight, the muscles around rib cage then there is a chance that our ribcage will move and allow us to smoke air in our body. So let's do a few um, inhalation and exhalation with the belly and ribcage and then exhalation with the ribcage and then belly. The vertebras are, uh, keep on stretching up. So, uh, this is the breath um, that is mostly connected uh, with the work of the belly, uh, where you actively inhale, inhale air with the belly, and then uh, exhale pushing from the belly back. In general, all the kinds of breath that we'll try to do today um, will be happening through the nose. 
so before you are starting the practice, it's good to clean your noise. Usually clo uh, closed during the practice. So we'll try the next exercise. We're actively inhaling with the belly, exhaling with the belly. Now we'll finish with the standard breath. Before we will do the next one, I will also remind that if some ladies have special days that are connected to reproductive system, menstruation or something like this, please be careful with any um, stomach manipulations because some people say that it can affect uh, reproductive processes in the body. So the next thing that we will do is the breath uh, of Kapalabhati. Uh, this is the breath where you're um, willingly and actively pushing the air from the belly, uh, just allowing the air enter the body next. So this is the breath of uh, active exhalation. I'll try to show and you can join me during the... Usually after the session of this kind of breath, there is a kumphaka happening. Kumphaka is the state where the breath stops naturally in your body without your will. For some reason, your breath uh, can pause. Maybe it can be also connected to the pause of your thoughts, the work of but uh, this is something much more complicated that I can um, digest and share nowadays. For now, let's try to repeat uh, the last Kapalabhati breath. I also find it important to activate um, abdominal area. Besides, I, I think it's important to start from breathing techniques, not to forget about this coordination during the practice. So let's try to do the session of this uh, breath. Um, together, we'll do around 20 30 times for now, and then um, we'll try just to observe what will happen in the body. If the breath will stop, it stops. If it doesn't stop, that's fine. Let's try to do it together again. All right, very well. And finally, I'm starting to release and relax because at the very beginning of the practice, honestly, I felt very um, worried about what's going to happen because it's my first time and doing such a strange uh, things without uh, looking in the eyes of people who we share practice with. Now I hope uh, everything will be a bit calmer. So next thing that we will do uh, are going to be few vinyasas uh, Surya Namaskar A and B, like a few variations of this A and B uh, Ashtanga Vinyasa School Vinyasas um, 
at the end of the class we can you can you should comment and ask anything you want about strange words like Yasa or Ashtanga school. I try to share anything I uh, can share and you know. I can try to give you some links uh, to books. Uh, whatever else uh, will be interesting for you. And now we will just try to practice. Uh, for those who are doing these things first time, you can check um, on my page. There is a post with all asanas that we will do today. Um, so the main thing that I want to say before we will practice, I will do it twice. First, we can just observe what I'm doing. Second time, I hope you will uh, repeat and do practice together with me, in case you've never done it before. Uh, because I will not be able to say instructions staying there, because the sound is not so good uh, when I'm going through the Skype. So first... Thank you. Thank you. Um, so only a few things I will I will tell before we will do the next uh, block. Um, I will ask like the coordination usual coordination of breath is inhalation with arching and deflecting, and uh, exhalation with bending our body and um, flexing the body. And the next thing uh, I would like you to uh, harmonically like equally spread the muscles and stretch the muscles of your frontal and backward side of your body. Um, always stretch your vertebras and be attentive to the work of your feet. Uh, yes, so let's try to do it together. Inhalation here, and exhalation into the round of Dandasana. Inhalation, Urdhva Mukha Shvanasana. Exhalation in Pasta Mukha Shvanasana. And we will have five cycles of breath in this position. We'll repeat this sequence again. Inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation, five more cycles of breath. Next oration of Surya Manaskar B, um, we'll do with only a few uh, comments. So all the bends uh, that are happening around uh, pelvis, I would like to ask you to do from the area of pelvis. Um, so instead of bending your back, I'd like you to turn your pelvis 
from vertical uh, position to horizontal and even more. Like I would like you to start the movement from the pelvis in order to uh, engage hamstrings, uh, the muscles of the back side of the leg that are connected to the sitting bones of uh, the pelvis. And uh, therefore, when we are doing Uttanasana, or when we are doing Adhamokoshvanasana, I will ask you to uh, put your focus on the moves of the arm spring, uh, hamstrings, uh, especially if you have any problems with your back. Um, we will continue with the next uh, block of next vinyasa. Utkatasana inhalation. Exhalation, Uttanasana. Arc Uttanasana, inhalation. Chaturanga Dandasana, exhalation. Inhalation, Urdhva Mukhashvanasana. Exhalation, Adhva Mukhashvanasana. Inhalation, Nirvadrasana 1. Remember the leg that you step first. We'll do one extra inhale and exhale in this position. Inhale. Exhale to Drama Dandasana. Inhalation, Udru Mukhashwanasana. Exhalation, Adha Mukhashwanasana. Inhalation, bring the next leg, another leg to Lord's. Nirvadrasana 1. One more inhalation and exhalation. Inhalation and exhalation to the round Urum Kushwanasana, inhalation. Atma Kushwanasana. And here we will stay for five more cycles of breath. So now, while you are doing this uh, asana, I will remind you about the coordination of the breath and uh, probably it will be helpful with reaching, stretching, for instance, our legs from, heart, from our heels towards hamstrings and sitting bones and pushing and reaching with, from our shoulders towards our hands uh, and vice versa, from hands to shoulders and then to the back and then to the pelvis with inhalation and then with exhalation just accepting this pose. So let's do last few uh, cycles of breath. breath. Then with exhalation we are going to Uttanasana. Inhalation, Artful Uttanasana. Exhalation, Uttanasana. Inhalation, Utkartasana. And inhalation, Tadasana. Uh, so next exercise that we will do will be Trikonasana. Trikonasana. Um, I will try to do and show you, say you some instructions and then we will do it properly. So for me, uh, the most important things Beside the shape with a uh, one, one meter twenty uh, centimeters distance between your feet, one foot turned uh, towards our one of shoulders, another foot uh, looks front and having a small, small angle uh, inside the center of the body. We are having pelvis and shoulders facing uh, toward the place where you're looking with your face. And then uh, I will ask you when you are, when we will go to Trikonasana, we will first tilt our pelvis, then we will stretch our arms and stretch all the vertebras, and then we will lower down the hand. Here also I will ask you to turn the biceps towards uh, in the same direction where you're looking with your head. And uh, these uh, stretching actions with your spine from pelvis to your head, with your legs 
from the heel toward the pelvis of one and other legs. These stretching movements are very important. So these are active sides of the asana. And besides this stretch, the, um, the leg that you are having uh, arm closed by will be turned out. So first, we'll do even a few exercises. We will uh, turn it in under direction, having this kind of reaching movement of our torso up. So it will be turn out and reaching, and again, turn out and reaching, and again, turn out and reaching, and once more, turn out and reaching with the torso. All right. So here, uh, before turning your hip in the hip joint, I would ask you to think about stretching and pulling the hip from the joint. So first we create some space in the joint and then we start to turn. The same principle that works with the vertebrae. So let's try to practice the whole asana. Um, turn your biceps toward in the same direction where you're watching, where you're facing. Where you're facing. Yes. Inhale. Exhale. And five cycles of breath in this position. The arms, the arms that have been stretched in two directions. Uh, oh God, I'm sorry, one moment. My grandfather calls me. I'm very, very, very sorry. All right. I hope everything will be fine. So after the last uh, cycle of inhalation and exhalation, we will try to come back to the basic position of Tadasana. And then we will do an exercise again from another leg. So the one meter, one ten centimeters distance between feet, turn the another leg in the under direction towards one of your shoulders. And again, we will repeat this movement. So we are stretching our torso up and we are turning our hip. We are kind of trying to lift our pelvis a bit up and then turn up and elongate our foot, uh, leg and turn it. And once more, we are turning and reaching up and then coming back. And again, lifting our torso, turning the hip in the hip jet and coming back. And once more, inhalation, lifting, elongating, turning, and we lowering down our foot on the floor. <laughs> then we are reaching our vertebras out, turning our biceps towards uh, the same direction we are looking for. We are looking, tilting our pelvis, stretching our torso, lowering down our hands, and with five cycles of breath, Every time we are reaching further and further, and then accepting the pose. And then we continue to reach with our legs from the heel to pelvis, and then our torso from the pelvis to our neck and head, and accepting the pose. I hope you don't forget to breathe because it's very, very important to understand how practice of the breath. And last cycle of breath. And we are coming back to the asana. Then, next asana that we will do will be Uttanasana. In Uttanasana, we will also have uh, five cycles of breath. Instead of Uttanasana, you can also try to do um, Padungustasana if you will uh, hold your biggest toes with your uh, fingers, or Padahastasana if you will put your hands under the feet. But uh, these options are for those who, who is just confident in what he's doing. And for all the rest, I will propose to do Uttanasana. And again, reaching up with our torso, we'll start the movement from the pelvis, instead of going to the back, activating our hamstrings. 
and then we will lower down our hands and we will have five cycles of breath in this position. Just you know, already I hope you are starting the movement, but you know during your practice um, that I would propose you to stretch and uh, think about uh, active breathing, uh, active and decisive stretch of the muscles of your abdominals from your pelvis towards your ribs and then your hamstrings. All right, let's do a few more cycles of uh, breath in this position. to the next exercise. Next exercise that we will try uh, called the Rubadrasana 2. Um, and uh, next time or in our comments, if we have more time, I will try to give you more instructions. For now, I will just do it with you. Five cycles of breath in one side to one, towards one side, five cycles of breath towards another side. The distance between leg, legs is a bit more than in Trikanasana, maybe 130-120 cm, depending on your height. Here again, one of the legs is uh, being pulled from the hip and turned out. And then after inhalation, we are bending this leg. And for vertical line uh, in your shin and horizontal line of your hip, of your thigh. Uh, I will ask you to bring your biceps towards the front and then at the end you can turn your head towards the planted leg in the same direction. The movement of the lifting the torso up will help your legs to carry less weight than if you go relax in the torso. And therefore, this posture would be lighter and easier, probably, for you if you think about elongation of your torso up. A few more inhales and exhales. And we will do the same exercise another side. So we are pulling the leg from the hip joint, elongating it and then turning. We are bending another leg, thinking about the stretch of our vertebras, uh, having one plane for the pelvis and shoulders and then turning the head in the direction of the bented leg. Five cycles of breath in this position. Thinking always about this stretching, 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 and stretching of the leg, and then accepting. Stretching of your hands one from another, and then accepting. Few more inhales and exhales. We are finishing this. Next thing that we will try to do with you will be uh, Prasarita Padatanasana. And uh, after that, we will have a, a few questions about the session. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough time. So next class will be uh, longer uh, or maybe it will be the same if it's fine for you. We will lost talk, less talks. But for now, we will do the last uh, asana for the day, which calls Prasarita Padatanas. So, in this asana, our shoulders and hips face uh, stays in one plane, and then we are just having 
uh, and with Tanasana bend, having our legs one meter, uh, around one meter, depending on the height, uh, distance apart. And then at the end, your uh, torso will, will try to stretch towards the floor. Your head shouldn't uh, lay uh, and rest on the floor, but there should be always some small, small distance between head and floor, so there is a space for you to stretch and reach. So let's try to this asana. You inhale, and then starting from our hamstrings, you go down and exhale in this position. Your arms can be placed with fingers, uh, like in Padanidushtasana. They can uh, stay on the floor, or you can put it on your hips. Let's do five more cycles of breath in this position. All right, for today that was uh, the last asana. Then after this asana I would propose to do Uddhottasana or uh, bridge and then uh, Halasana and then Shavasana. And you can also finish uh, this practice with Shavasana with just uh, laying on the floor passively and observing what is happening without caring and reacting. This is kind of a practice of uh, conscious relaxation. But now then, uh, I will stay with you um, for a few more minutes to answer some questions that could appear during the practice. Maybe there were no questions. And it's also fine because that means that you're just trying to do. Um, besides, it could also be that you didn't care at all of what's happening. It is also pro totally fine and normal. Uh, and then I will check comments, and after a few words we will learn well for today. Ah, Andrus, are there comments? Where can you check? All right. Then for today, guys, um, I will just propose you to lay uh, move less a bit on the floor at the end of practice to thank your body for what you shortly have done. Uh, please comment uh, anything that you want, uh, because next week I would like to do another class, but maybe less talk, uh, less instructions, or with some instructions in advance. Um, yes. And then I will just invite you for other events that our company is going to uh, make this week. Uh, one performance for children tomorrow at 12, a performance for adults um, on Thursday, and the class for seniors, dance class for seniors on Friday. Have a good evening. Um, come to visit uh, proper classes uh, live, not just online. And I hope everybody will be healthy one day and uh, will have a chance to communicate, not just through the web camera. Best wishes, guys. Yes, thank you for coming and uh, sharing this physical activity together. Bye-bye.